Good day, everyone. It's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, and you're listening to another DevOps.com webinar. I um, hope everyone is excited today for a great webinar we have. We're going to be joined by some friends from ABN AMRO, and they're going to be talking about their CI, CD, and uh, digital transformation. Before we get started, though, I wanted to just mention a few things. First of all, today's webinar is sponsored by CloudBees. Uh, Jenkins, CloudBees Enterprise. So many thanks to them for their sponsorship here. For those of you who are not familiar with the DevOps.com webinar, we do use the GoToWebinar control panel. We have set aside time for questions at the end of today's presentation. We ask, however, that you type your questions into the GoToWebinar control panel, marked questions of all things. Um, this way it will allow for um, you to put your questions in. You don't have to remember them for the end of the webinar. Type them in in real time. They're queued. We can queue them up. We can get them in order. It just makes for a much better experience for everyone involved. So please type your questions into the question section. If you're having technical difficulties, though, Perhaps the audio isn't working well. The slides aren't progressing. Please use the chat section of your GoToWebinar control panel, as we do have engineers standing by who will help you in uh, the best they can in solving your technical issues. So chats for technical issues, questions if you have questions, and I'm sure you will. Don't be shy about asking them. With that, let us get started. As I mentioned, today's webinar is uh, made possible by our friends at ABN, ABN AMRO, and they're going to be talking about trans, how ABM AMRO, trans, AMRO transforms with CICD to accelerate software delivery and improve security. Uh, we have two great panelists today. If we could go to the next slide. We have Stefan. Here, here are their pretty pictures up here. We have Stefan Sim Simonin. I'm not going to pronounce it well. I apologize, Stefan. And Weeby Darus, uh, CICD consultant. So, gentlemen, are you ready? Yes, you're yes, ready, Alan. Are. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. Okay, okay. take it away. Uh, hello to everybody. Um, let me introduce ourselves, uh, because you pronounced the names a little bit wrong, but no issue. Uh, my name is Stefan Simenon. I'm a head of IT tooling and software development within ABNMO. And since uh, four years, I'm responsible for the IT tooling and the software quality and continuous integration at uh, uh, so, uh, ABNMO. And uh, joining me is Wiebe de Roos. Uh, he is uh, one of my team members, CSD consultant. And he is uh, busy, heavily involved in uh, implementing CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise within ABNMO. So I will um, uh, share the, the CICD setup, uh, the, the experiences um, in the beginning. Then I will hand over to Wiebe, who will focus upon the CloudBees Jenkins implementation with, within ABNMO. And then I will do the final part of the uh, presentation. Um, let me first introduce ABNMO. Uh, ABNMO is a leading bank within the Netherlands. Uh, it's the third large, largest bank. We have 22,000 internal employees. We are headquartered in Amsterdam. And we have little uh, presence abroad as well. And we are an IT of an agile organization uh, consisting of 5,000, um, uh, approximately 5,000 associates. And we have uh, approximately uh, approximately 300 plus agile teams within ABNMO. Um, we used to be a waterfall organization. Uh, that was about three to four years ago. Uh, during waterfall, um, uh, we experienced um, long lead times and, and long lead times for starting up projects and long lead times for um, uh, implementing software into production. Um, uh, there were all kinds of bureaucratic uh, project phases defined and uh, people were many times waiting for each other to get something approved. And so we did one time, we did an exercise, how long it would take to define and implement an Hello World application. And if we would follow all the processes within the bank, 
it would take around uh, six months. Uh, so it took already two to three months to, to, to start up a project. Then a project leader was announced. Then uh, a resource need to be allocated. And then after people had built something, it also took a long time to uh, test and release something to production. At the same time, um, you know, we saw growing um, uh, competition, uh, competition, so to say. Um, we see more uh, fintechs popping up. Also, fintechs um, who, who are getting involved in, in banking industry. And also, our banks close by, uh, they were also uh, speeding up. So, we needed to do something. Uh, we, we, we already had started an agile transition uh, with an ABNAVO. Uh, that means that the agile program has been <coughs> set up uh, to, 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 to do a transition. Um, in the beginning, more and more agile teams were uh, set up uh, within um, the, the waterfall organization. And this was growing uh, continuously. And at some point of time, a reorganization was done. Uh, to, to, to move to a complete um, agile enterprise, focusing upon um, associates having the right agile mindset, um, pre-funded teams instead of uh, all kind of people uh, requesting budgets uh, to start up projects. And um, we, we, we used to have much more overhead than we currently have. Uh, so we had lots of project officers, lots of project leads, lots of project managers, uh, that, that had, has been reduced significantly. And currently, we have much more focusing upon uh, software engineering and making sure software is made available to our clients. Hmm? Um, this agile transition was uh, completed uh, last year, August. And um, we, 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 we already started the continuous integration, continuous delivery initiative. And this initiative is now slightly moving into a DevOps uh, initiative. Next to the agile transition, uh, we said this is not enough. Uh, we, we also need to speed up software delivery. And for this, we have said uh, we need to do continuous integration, continuous delivery, and in the end, we want to move to continuous deployment. Uh, this means that between um, um, developing software and uh, deploying software into production, everything is uh, getting automated. Uh, we are automating our integration process. Uh, people are more and more integrating their software at the early stage. Uh, we are um, um, provide. Uh, we have implemented all kinds of tools uh, to to give full transparency. And continuous delivery, that is all about an automated to, to, to prepare a software release moving to production. And continuous deployment, uh, our uh, definition of con continuous deployment is that software is moved to production right from uh, commit feature without any human interaction, so to say. This is our ultimate goal. So what did we do in the past? Uh, this was about three years ago, I think. Uh, we set up a program initiative, uh, which consisted of, of two main parts, pave the way and make it happen. Pave the way is all about the, the technical um, prerequisites which are needed uh, to, to automate everything, meaning um, uh, select and implement the right tools, um, uh, define and implement all kinds of pipelines. Uh, a pipeline is a set of tools being integrated with each other uh, to facilitate automation. All kind of infrastructure prerequisites have been arranged. And um, yeah, we have set up an organization to, to maintain and continuously improve the pipelines. Uh, this is only uh, a, and this is a difficult part of, of the journey, but it's, it's, it's a relatively small part. Uh, but our belief is that it's about 20. Twenty twenty five percent about automation, and it's seventy to eighty percent about. 
So what did we do in the past? Um, we, we, we implemented a small pipeline uh, based upon Jenkins, based upon Maven, or Nexus, Bitbucket. Um, uh, we, we, we selected a few teams uh, who were eager to learn, who were eager to change. Uh, we allowed the team to work with the pipeline. We made the benefits clear to our management. Uh, we, we, we demonstrated uh, the things to our management, uh, the, the, the people, uh, uh, the, the engineers got very excited about it, and the management also got very excited about it. And based upon those initiatives, um, a, a bigger initiative was started to, to implement continuous integration, continuous delivery for the whole ABNAMO organization. Uh, so CSD became one of the four strategic pillars uh, of IT. So once people uh, start their, their journey, uh, they start uh, the, the, the continuous integration exercise. Um, once teams become more mature over there, uh, the, the people start thinking about uh, continuous delivery. And um, over time, you see more and more uh, teams moving to continuous delivery. Um, we, we extend the technologies at, at some point of time. Uh, so we currently we're doing not only CICD for Java front end, but also more technologies. I will explain about that at a later stage. And um, we even have one team or few teams um, doing continuous deployment at this point of time. Uh, so we're uh, making good uh, progress in the journey. Um, what was the approach? I think I have said most of them. Very important is to, to work together uh, across uh, departments, not only dev and ops, uh, but we also have integrated our security in our pipelines. I will show that later. Very important is to, to set expectation management. Uh, so if you want to implement uh, CSD, it will take three to eight years for a company like Abenavo. And um, at this point of time, I even believe it, it, it never stops uh, because CSD is all about um, continuous improvement and there's always room to improve, if you ask me. And what you also said, we're not going to make long-term plans. Uh, we, we define a dot on the, on the horizon and every quarter uh, we're going to plan what we are going to do next quarter. And we do that uh, 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 based upon learning and um, all kinds of improvements which are required. So what are the results so far? We implemented Jira as an HR tool set. We grew from 2,000 to 10,000 plus users uh, in, in two to five years, and it's still growing. We also implemented Confluence and Slack, and these tools are getting integrated in our pipelines. And next to the, the, the tool implementation, we also have defined uh, one way of uh, working for Jira huh? because we saw in the beginning that everybody was doing their own stuff in Jira, leading to, to, to some performance issues. And also um, huh? because of this lack of standardization, we were not uh, able to get uh, um, desired uh, improvements. So we also defined a standard way of working within uh, uh, Jira. Um, we have implemented all kinds of tools uh, for our pipelines. We have integrated them with each other, and we have selected the right tools for release and deployment management. Uh, we also have defined one single way of working for release and deployment management. Um, we have already created some standard CD pipelines, and we are um, um, even making more at this point of time. VSCS has been selected uh, as our CSD pipeline for Microsoft technology, uh, which will be landing on Azure. And currently we have about 100 applications doing automated deployments. And we have more than, yeah, in the, in the, in the presentation is mentioned 500, but this week I found out it's even more than 1,000 Excel release uh, users. And the numbers are still growing. Uh, you see that more and more teams take the initiative uh, to do these kind of things themselves. Um, software quality, we'll uh, elaborate upon this later. Uh, we implemented the right tools for, for uh, um, uh, software quality. Automated testing, we have implemented uh, all tools required, and teams are 
um, more and more automating and teams are doing a shift left in, in testing. And for mainframe, um, we also have uh, defined a plan uh, to accelerate. Uh, we have upgraded all tools. Uh, we have um, we move into our latest COBOL compiler to get all kind of uh, uh, memory and MSE, MSU usage benefits. And we also uh, making a mainframe pipeline based upon Compuware, Topaz Tool, ISPW, also Jenkins, and SolarCube. So this is the this is the mid-range build and delivery pipeline. Uh, so our vision is that continuous integration is managed by Jenkins. Um, the, the continuous integration is done in an iterative way. Uh, the goal is to, to define and implement uh, minimum viable products uh, within two to three weeks. Uh, once, once all the quality gates are um, passed, uh, then, uh, then um, a deployable uh, artifact will be stored in uh, Nexus. And from Nexus onwards, XL release will take it over. Uh, XL release is, is positioned as the orchestrator for, for continuous delivery. And um, XL release will trigger the, the change management process uh, by ServiceNow. Uh, all kind of regression and, and functional testing is triggered by uh, XL release. And the deployments uh, done by XL deploy are also triggered uh, via XL release. We are um, um, extending our pipelines uh, with Confluence uh, for, for product information, uh, for documentation, and Slack. Uh, Slack is a tool used for, for chat. Uh, it's a chat tool in which all kinds of technical details can be included. And uh, Slack is also uh, integrated in our pipelines. And we also have Splunk for logging and AppDynamics for application monitoring. And these tools are also getting more and more integrated in our pipelines. So um, I just showed the, 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 pipe, uh, the, 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 the main tools, which are used for front end, for Java, for, for TIPCO. Um, we also have pipelines for mobile, mobile iOS, and mobile Android. We have um, a VSTS pipeline for Microsoft technology. Power Center ETL is used in a, in a data, data warehouse environment. Uh, we are building a pipeline there. And for mainframe, we are also in progress uh, making a pipeline. And also for commercial of the shelf, uh, we are also defining a standard way of uh, improving implementation, uh, uh, mainly based upon Ansible. So this is also picked up uh, at this point of time. Uh, so as you see, we have multiple pipelines within ABNARO. So then, uh, as I said earlier, I'm also responsible for, for software quality. Um, uh, so we have two kinds of software quality, uh, the, the regular software quality and the secure, uh, the secure, secure coding. Our belief is that uh, the better the quality of the software, the, the easier and the quicker uh, teams can, can update software and can release uh, new functionalities. Uh, so code quality is key for us. And secure coding, yeah, we are a bank. Uh, uh, very important for a bank is to be reliable. And um, yeah, we want to ensure that our software is also reliable and secure. So therefore, we have uh, Fortify implemented for secure coding, and we have Nexus Lifecycle implemented um, um, to check the vulnerability of our open source, uh, the, the open source libraries which we, we are using. Um, so um, once the code is, is uh, the quality of the code is not good, once we see severe issues, or once we see um, unsecure coding, uh, then we have build breakers and quality gates implemented, which will cause the build to fail. And the programmer needs to fix the issue before being able to um, publish a deployable artifact in Nexus. Uh, and, and also this has been um, defined in the definition of DOM. And the definition of DOM is also mentioned. Uh, your code quality should be okay. And your code should be secure. And if the code quality is not okay, then uh, teams are not able to release software into next environments and production environment. 
Now we have set up a whole uh, software quality governance around it. Uh, we have um, agreed upon this with the senior management. Uh, once we uh, implemented the build breakers in the beginning, we saw some resistance from Scrum Master, from teams, from product owners. People were complaining that, that all kind of business functionality could not be delivered because of the build breakers. But over time, you see more and more acceptance and you also see more and more awareness uh, within the development community. And I see more and more developers who find it uh, important uh, to, de to, to deliver good code quality and to, de to deliver uh, secure coding. So, um, we also have set up an IT for IT organization uh, to, to, uh, uh, to implement the tools and to continuously enhance the pipeline. Uh, it's not, uh, the name is not IT for IT anymore. Uh, we call it now an IT value chain organization. But all kind of HR teams have been set up to, to implement tooling upgrades, uh, to implement new tools wherever needed, uh, to continuously improve the pipelines, uh, to, to handle user management, to do incident and problem management. Uh, so our belief is agile. We want to eat our own dog food. So also the IT for IT organization does consist of um, agile teams. Uh, so we have a team for Jira, we have a team for software logistics, we have a team for test tooling, we have a team for application deployment, uh, application deployment support. And um, I think nine to 10 teams are in place with an ABN MO. Okay, so I now uh, want to hand over to Wiebe. Wiebe is uh, going to explain about our current uh, environment. What did we reach with it? And what are the, the issues we face? And Wiebe is going to explain uh, how are we going to improve by uh, CloudBees Jenkins Enterprise. Yeah, hello everyone. So as Stephen already said uh, earlier on in this presentation, um, the Jenkins platform is a very, very important tool to, uh, for all of the CI and part of the CD stages. So what we currently have is we're utilizing CloudBees um, Jenkins, uh, the professional version. And that version consists of a number of building blocks. And the most important building block here is the Jenkins Operation Center, the GOC. Uh, you can see that on top of the, the slide, uh, on top of the page in the middle. And connecting to the Jenkins Operation Center, there are multiple Jenkins master servers. As of now, we have um, 10 Jenkins master servers, all hosting uh, lots of teams. Those master servers are uh, overloaded. Yeah, I, I think we're having a slight problem with the audio. I apologize. Um, these things happen. I'm not sure if we can hear us. Yes? Environment. <clears throat> I hope you did hear the last words because we saw a connection loss and audio loss, uh, but let's continue. Um, so um, next to the operation center, we have some Jenkins build slaves. You can see that in the middle of the slide, uh, we have the so-called shared slaves, and that means every team can utilize those um, build slaves. And as of now, we have more than 80 build slaves and those build slaves are Linux build slaves and uh, Windows build slaves. And that's all uh, a big bunch of um, VMs. Uh, next to it, we also have dynamic slaves. And that means we have specific masters for specific groups of teams that utilize their own build slaves. And on top of that, we have more than 60,000 Jenkins jobs, uh, lots of plugins, for example, more than 250 plugins. and. In the end, we have to support almost uh, 1,500 developers right now, and we are onboarding every week. We are onboarding more than five teams, and every team is like an agile team, maybe five or two, seven developers. Um, so that means it's it's growing every day, and we have more than 70 VMs right now in our uh, data center, and that number, yeah, well, it's still growing and growing, and we're not proud of it. 
So we needed to find a solution to handle these kind of workloads and to, to uh, keep peace with all of the um, Agile teams and also to, to control this in a, in, a, in a good fashion. So that's why we selected uh, last quarter of uh, 2017, we selected uh, Jenkins Enterprise Edition to be hosted on AWS as the next step for our um, Jenkins platform. So what are we going to do if we need to change to Jenkins Enterprise? So as of now, the whole Jenkins platform is being maintained by one of the IT for IT teams. It's called the Software Logistics Team. And um, if, for example, a developer team wants to have a plugin installed on a Jenkins master, they should ask the IT for IT team to install that plugin so they can utilize that. But they need to adhere to the Scrum uh, sprints and maybe there's a user story on the backlog. They need to get the right priority for the team. Um, they're completely dependent on the IT for IT team. Also, there might be a problem if that plugin conflicts with another plugin that another team is using. So that's giving all kinds of uh, problems here. It's, it's, it's reducing lead times, so it's increasing time for teams to deliver software if they're dependent on that example of that plugin. So we have centralized maintenance in the old situation and we want to have decentralized maintenance of the Jenkins masters. So with the help of Jenkins Enterprise, we can give every team their own Jenkins master. We can give their own uh, the responsibility and also possibility to maintain their own Jenkins master so they can freely experiment with it. And then with that, we are going to shift from limited team autonomy to increased autonomy. And we try to reduce the conflicts that will happen in the tools and the configuration. Also, there's another example on every build slave, for example, there are multiple versions of Java, Java 6, 7, 8, IBM Java, Oracle Java, OpenJDK, and the same goes for Maven, Maven 2, Maven 3, 3.5, etc. That's all being packed on all of the build slaves. Imagine we have more than uh, 80 build slaves, including uh, more than 10 tools, also for front-end Node.js, for example. On all of those build slaves, you end up with a whole bunch of configuration um, conflicts. So with Jenkins Enterprise, we want to decentralize the maintenance, uh, creating lots of masters and specialized build slaves for specific technologies. So with that, we're reducing the conflicts in the tools and configuration and making maintenance um, very much more easy. But I think there's one more point that's very, very important here is uh, the last couple of years with the Jenkins platform, the, the old platform, the old Jenkins uh, situation, um, we had to do manual scaling. And that means if we are reaching uh, our capacity or our capacity is insufficient, for example, on Wednesday afternoon, if there's lots of teams uh, doing releases, then those Jenkins servers are overloaded. And that causes a problem because we need to add a VM or add build slaves. And we needed to request all of those VMs manually. So, and that can take, for example, in our organization, that can take weeks. We cannot wait for so many weeks. So we needed to have automatic scaling. And with Jenkins Enterprise, we can scale when we need. So as of now, we can just um, fire a script. It will add more VMs and then we can increase our um, build capacity. So that's a very, very big advantage here. And that's what uh, Jenkins Enterprise on AWS now makes it possible for us. So briefly said, we're going to migrate from static VMs to a Docker containers. Uh, everything uh, in Jenkins Enterprise is based on Docker containers. And um, we can scale, for example, the number of Docker containers which are being needed uh, to do builds but we can also scale the number of VMs in AWS to EC2 instances, which are needed to run and host all of those Docker containers. So we can decommission the VMs and we can shift it all to Docker containers and that will greatly reduce the costs that, uh, of this whole um, solution. So if we take a look at Jenkins Enterprise, uh, how that looks right now in the organization, uh, we have an AWS virtual private cloud, 
and that's on the top of the slide. And we have our uh, Jenkins Enterprise uh, being uh, hosted there. We installed it in the beginning of 2018 together with a CloudBeast engineer. And we have our masters, our scalable masters and our scalable slaves, all based on Docker containers. We have hosted it there and it's based on Mesos and Marathon. And there are multiple connections to the on-prem data center. You can see at the bottom of the slide, it's all being focused on the CI part. So if a developer um, checks in source code in Bitbucket, um, there will be a Jenkins job in AWS, in Jenkins Enterprise being triggered. Um, it will process that job. And when the job is finished, and if there are no build breakers, if the job uh, finished uh, successfully, there will be an artifact pushed in uh, Nexus. All of those CI tools are still on the on-prem data center, but we also plan to move them to, to AWS later on this year. So if there's an artifact in Nexus, there will also be a trigger to Excel release, and then the whole release and deployment uh, phase, the CD part of the whole pipeline uh, will be kicked, uh, kicked off. So that's what it basically looks like. Uh, it's like a high over uh, architecture picture. And if we take a look at the internals of Jenkins Enterprise here, then you can see in the middle of the screen, um, there's the CloudBeast Jenkins Operations Center. And that's like the heart of the system. And the operation center controls all of the masters and agents and logs that you see. And those are the smaller blocks uh, at the right. And um, it's all running in uh, AWS in a high, very high available um, cluster. And uh, it, it's running on VMs. And we choose to run that on AWS because we are working together with um, AWS as a cloud provider also for, for, for other projects. And what we can achieve here is that we can continuous integration, continuous deployment as a service. We can offer that to the developers. You see that on the top left of the slide. And um, we're also uh, providing self-service Jenkins to, um, to, to CI and CD teams because they can have control over their own Jenkins server here. And then there's still the IT for IT team that's maintaining the operation center and the underlying infrastructure. But we do not need to rely on lots of other teams or a cloud provider because it's all um, it's all self-service provisioning and we can maintain our own stuff and we do not rely on uh, others. So in the end, the agile teams can maintain their own uh, Jenkins masters, run their own pipelines in the way they like it. They can also use the standard pipelines if they have an application that's being supported by that pipeline. That's also a way to enforce quality because build breakers are in there and it's enforcing uh, a good quality and a good architectural uh, structure of their applications. And um, this solution really prevents interference with uh, other teams and reducing conflicts. If we take this in an example, if there is a Jenkins master failing right now, then more than 300 people, maybe even more, are being affected because of downtime. And in the new situation, if every team gets their own master, maybe only one team is being affected, and that means only five to seven people. So that really helps in getting a high availability, and it's creating less impact if there is a problem. <clears throat> so that's basically... Um, uh, the, the, the setup of Jenkins Enterprise uh, at ABN AMRO. <clears throat> I will briefly look at what we currently, uh, what we have achieved right now, and I'm looking forward into the future and provide some uh, next steps here. So we did the installation of Jenkins Enterprise together with CloudBeast at the beginning of 2018. We did a successful installation. It was just a matter of uh, three days. So then it was all up and running and was running very smooth. Um, we had automated provisioning of the Jenkins masters. We created recipes, that's like scripts to create Jenkins masters. Um, you just give in the team name and you execute the script and you have a Jenkins master. That's a matter of minutes right now compared to a matter of months uh, in the past. We're all using Docker containers. Docker is everywhere. It's not a scared uh, term here. Everyone is getting used to Docker and uh, it's also accelerating uh, innovation because the, the Docker containers can do so much more than just 
uh, hosting an application or uh, being a build container here. Um, we have established a secure connection with uh, from Jenkins Enterprise in AWS with the on-prem data center. That's all being secure and that's uh, working perfectly fine. Um, we did some performance tests to see how stable the current environment is. And we ran successfully, for example, 250 Jenkins jobs at the same time on uh, different masters and none of the masters did really crash or restart it or whatever. And it didn't impact all of the other masters. So it's really a very stable environment uh, which we can fully extend if it's really needed to, to, to onboard more teams or support a high load. There were also some security issues. Of course, we're a bank and security is, is, is top priority here. It's security is king. Um, we identified all of them up front and we made a plan to, to mitigate or to resolve them. And I'm very proud to say that we can really work in the public cloud um, in a very secure way. So that's all the stuff we, we, we did to get an approval from the cloud approval board. That's like a management board in which you have to uh, show your plan and prove all of the um, points in which Okay, we seem to have had an, uh, another little audio outage. Again, we apologize. The internet being what it is. You will be assessed to say. Like that. If your application is really ready for the cloud. So I'm going to be enterprise. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we are connecting the Jenkins Enterprise to our current uh, LDAP system. And once we have done that, we can onboard the first uh, Agile teams. Um, so we plan to have 10 teams on our test environment uh, when this is ready. And there's a big change. Uh, now we're using uh, Jenkins Enterprise version number one. Uh, but later on, when the Kubernetes is ready for AWS, then we will utilize uh, Kubernetes in the, in the future. And we hope that we can finish the complete rollout uh, by the beginning of next year. So that's it about Jenkins Enterprise. Heading back to Stephen for the next slides. Okay, thank you. Now, many challenging activities going on. Yeah? And, um, setting up things, uh, moving teams to the new environment, um, making sure that the current environment is phased out. And in the meantime, we are also planning to migrate to the CGE 2.0, the Kubernetes uh, version. Um, so um, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Make It Happen initiative um, I previously mentioned. So within Aben Arbor, we have defined uh, five key principles. Um, the first one is to automate everything that can be automated, uh, automate all repetitive tasks. Uh, so that should be part of the, the, the blood of a developer. And this is, uh, um, yeah, currently this is wide, widely implemented and improvements are uh, going on. The second key principle is integrate quickly and often. In the past, you saw that people were developing uh, on the local machine. And they, they were keeping their code there for days, for weeks, sometimes for months. And they, they integrated at a late stage. And because of this, all kind of conflicts were discovered at a late stage. And the later the conflict is um, discovered, the more time it takes. So now we want the developers to integrate as quickly as possible, uh, minimum one time per day, and we are moving to trunk-based development instead of feature-based uh, development. Everyone is equally responsible. Uh, we want to give the mandate to the teams, and uh, the teams, they need to take the mandate, and uh, the management needs to uh, give trust to the teams. Uh, Okay, and, um, and this is also a very important principle uh, in Aben Ambo. The fourth one, and uh, I believe this is the, the most difficult one, keep changes small. Huh? So the goal is to deliver business functionality in two weeks and to push it directly to production. So, um, um, uh, so that means that uh, legacy uh, software needs to be uh, improved. Um, refactoring uh, needs to be done, 
Uh, in some areas, we have big monoliths, uh, which need to be um, cut into small pieces, into microservices. And um, yeah, this is very important to, to ensure continuous integration, continuous delivery. Uh, so in the beginning, there was a little awareness about this, but now there is more and more awareness within ABNM about this. And, and we see already teams who are making plans or are um, um, conducting plans to um, um, refactor their application and to break down the monoliths. And the fifth uh, thing, um, I already talked about it, get continuous feedback. Uh, so get feedback as early as possible um, and give the feedback to the whole team so that um, communication issues can be prevented. So what did we do in the past? We got to make it happen um, in order to raise management awareness, to, to, to increase the management commitment. A CSD summer event was held, a uh, lot of knowledge sharing sessions, lots of demos, lots of best practice uh, sharing, also uh, some good parties in, in between. And um, this led to lots of uh, management uh, commitment. Um, now we have um set up a change management program focusing upon mindset and behavior um, we have a coaching framework uh, developed uh, so we have uh, around 20 25 coaches which help the hr teams and uh, we also have e-learning models uh, to to make the teams aware of the uh, csd uh, basics and principles and last but least we are uh, we have set up lots of co communities, lots of gatherings, um, external speakers are invited uh, to talk and to organize sessions within ABNAMO. We try to have a, a good relationship with our tooling suppliers and um, representatives from all kinds of tooling suppliers are also visiting ABNAMO to, to interact uh, with the teams uh, to discuss all kinds of improvements and to show um, um, future features of their roadmaps. And very important is that a platform is set up uh, to present successes, uh, to share your knowledge, and uh, even more important, uh, to share the failures and um, to, to share how people learn from the failures. So what are the realized benefits with an ABNAMO? Uh, you see uh, all kinds of figures. Uh, we see more deployments. We see increased number of successful builds. Uh, we see um, lead time and testing. Uh, we see improved code quality, improved secure coding. And this is all about getting better little by little. Uh, so this is uh, the small steps getting better. Uh, some, some examples, internet banking went from four releases to, to per year to, to 18 per year, and they are planning to, 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 to release every two days. Uh, you see that uh, one team doubled their velocity after one sprint, doing only CSD improvements. Uh, we see a private banking team who uh, reduced the build from five hours to, to five minutes. Uh, doing continuous integration. Uh, we see uh, first teams doing continuous deployment, and we see that people doing uh, release management, that they are decreasing their uh, release, uh, uh, release times. Uh, so the benefits are, are different per team, but um, the all over um, impression is that CSD helps a lot to continuously improve. Now, what are the takeaways? Very important senior management commitment and involvement. Right? They need to provide the budgets. They need to uh, um, resolve important impediments. Right? They need to spread the message. Right? They need to tell each and everybody uh, that this is crucial. Um, reducing technical debt, refactoring, very important. Uh, I talked about it uh, during the key principles. And very important is create a safe environment. If somebody is making a mistake or if somebody is making a failure, do not punish the person, but allow him to learn from the failure. And we even say uh, that failing is okay. Uh, the more people fail, the more that they, they learn. Some uh, pitfalls do not focus upon tooling only. Tooling is only 20% of the, of, the, of, the, of the journey. 
do not underestimate its complexity. It's very complex and it's complex as, as people think in the beginning. And do not focus on long-term uh, plans, but focus upon small improvements. Yeah, start small and improve little by little. So what is the way forward? Uh, we keep on automating and improving the tooling pipelines continuously. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, we are uh, transforming to DevOps. Uh, we have a plan that, that 40 teams uh, need to be DevOps uh, ready uh, by this year. Um, improving way of working, mindset behavior is a continuous attention point. Uh, we need to continuously do that. We have talked about facilitating uh, team autonomy. Very important is that we have a hybrid cloud strategy. Uh, we have uh, on-premise uh, infrastructure, but next to this, we have approved Azure and AWS uh, um, cloud, public cloud. And you see that more and more teams are moving to, uh, to uh, public cloud to take the benefits um, from that platform. Also, the, the tools are planned to be moved there. Uh, so as you see, we as Abenable, we, we want to provide our development community, our agile teams with the best of art tools and the best of art uh, infrastructure. We're doing a database automation RFP. Uh, so what you see that we, we, we have improved our software delivery a lot, uh, but database um, uh, delivery and database changes are still done in a manual way uh, with a separate DBA group. And we are also planning to, to, to move that to the Azure teams and to implement a tool uh, so that uh, database changes can be included in all kinds of pipelines together with the uh, software delivery changes. And one important aspect is that we are setting up a CSD dashboard. Uh, we're making good progress in this. So based on Splunk, uh, all kinds of data is uh, retrieved and we have defined uh, 20 CSD uh, metrics. Uh, which help us uh, to make decisions based upon uh, data. And we already see some good results based upon this. This was our last sheet. So, uh, Ellen, I would like to hand I am here. To, uh, you're still there? I am still here. I've been through it all. Guys, we only have about two hours worth of questions, not you to made, worry. Uh, you made some good noise during our presentation, we notified. Huh? Yeah, we tried. Yeah, we yeah. tried. Yeah, that's the song of interest. <laughs> okay, Very good. good. <laughs> but that's it, guys. No, no, guys, we have a lot of questions if, if you okay. have some time. A lot of questions. Okay, that's good. Okay, so first, first question. So we see front end. Actually, I'm going to ask you the first question, my own question, and that is this. For whatever reason, the financial services sector seems to be way out in front on DevOps adoption. Uh, and this is a worldwide thing with banks all over North America, Europe, Asia. They, in many instances, are well ahead of other sectors in adopting CI, CD, DevOps, Agile, Lean, et cetera. What do you attribute that to? Why is the financial sector usually so conservative, so aggressive in DevOps adoption? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, you see all kinds of fintech companies delivering stuff in a quick way. You see, you see that clients, or, or uh, they uh, they expect fancy uh, fancy stuff. Uh, they expect expect uh, quick uh, quick updates, and uh, we as a bank uh, we also want to attract uh, the right people. Uh, we want to be a sexy environment uh, for developers. So uh, um, uh, so my personal belief that that banks are not banks anymore, but banks are IT companies having a bank banking license huh? so in order to um, uh, yeah in order to be attractive huh, for for future personal and in, uh, in order to make sure that that quickly new features can be delivered huh, to our clients and the clients are asking for this yeah our belief is that uh, this is the way to go yeah there's also some research being done stating um financial i think we're losing a little bit of audio again 
institutions are well IT companies producing uh, and just for the financial markets it's a research from hello Hello, we lost you there for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, we, we can still hear you. We, we, we can hear you again. Okay. All right. Our okay. next question, let's dive into some uh, questions that are a little more technical. Uh, one of our listeners said he sees on the front end a uh, Java and on the CICD program setup slide. What about legacy systems? For instance, mainframes, how do you deal with changes on legacy platforms in relation to the new platform? Yeah, so there are two things. Eh? We want to decouple the, 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 the systems of record from the systems of engagement. Eh? So we want to do front-end changes independently on, on mainframe changes. So we are implementing an, an, an ESB layer eh? between the, the mainframe and the front-end. Eh? So that's one thing. Um, but on the other hand, uh, we have lots of legacy systems. We have lots of uh, mainframe programs within the bank. And the mainframe is one of our strategic uh, infrastructure as well. And we also have a plan to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to implement um, a mainframe pipeline. Huh? So we have procured the Topaz product uh, from Compuware. That has been implemented, and we are now busy uh, um, connecting it with Jenkins and SonarCube and ISPW to uh, to to um, uh, to uh, uh, enable the people to deliver uh, uh, mainframe changes in a quicker way. Uh, it's a difficult it's a difficult uh, exercise, but we don't want to give up. And also, the mainframe is very important for us. I think there's something that needs to be uh, that can be added here is, um, for example, if we uh, facilitate all of these CI CD teams with a very good um, platform for CI, now we have the Jenkins Enterprise, and if that's very attractive and only supporting new technologies, for example, not Java four or five or whatever, then people are really encouraged and um, enthusiastic to use that new platform. So the more attractive we make our new solutions, new tools, new implementations, the faster people are moving towards that tools because that greatly increases their availability and uh, usability of it. That also helps. Okay, good. Excellent. Uh, can you elaborate on the Splunk integration with pipeline? What and how? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Which which integration? Splunk. Can you elaborate on the Splunk oh, integration? Yeah, yeah. So I can elaborate a little bit on it. Um, so Splunk is used for uh, monitoring the availability of all kind of um, um, systems, and um, yeah, therefore it's integrated uh, within the pipelines uh, for some applications. But we may we are also using Splunk uh, for our CSD metrics. Huh? So as I said, we have defined all kind of uh, metrics. Uh, for example, lead time, code quality, uh, change failure rate, um, uh, and, and more. And we have connected Splunk uh, to all kind of tools. And based on the log information of all kind of tools, uh, we can extract that information to readable management information. So we have a separate um, um, IT for IT team set up, and the person who is interested uh, in this, we can have a separate call uh, with the product owner of that team. Very good. Um, what about test management tools like HPE ALM implemented for automated testing? Or are the test management tools like HPE ALM implemented for automated testing? Yeah, so we have currently the HP tools, uh, HP ALM, HP U of T. Uh, so more and more teams also use Selenium and Protector. Uh, one important thing is that uh, uh, we continuously look into improvements, also for the tools. And um, although we have integrated the HP tools in our pipelines in, in some areas, 
um, we are looking for further opportunities. Uh, so we're also looking to other tools. Excellent. Um, do you have, uh, ooh, I don't know, this one's not spelled as, not having automated functional tests besides unit tests as part of your build pipeline. No, do you have automated functional tests, continuous yeah, yeah. testing? Yes, so we have protector integrated in the pipelines. We also have uh, U of T integrated in some pipelines. And people can use and should use those tools to automate the testing. Huh? So uh, from our IT value chain, we offer the, the, the right tools. We offer the pipelines. Uh, there is a, a center of expertise who helps in, in the procedures and all kind of things. But the testing, uh, the the, the the, the automation of the test scripts and that should be done by the teams itself. So um, and yeah, that's that's happening in the in the agile teams. Huh? The, the, uh, there are teams who have done a uh, lot of test automation, and there are teams which uh, which which have uh, less test automation. But that's something that the teams should implement themselves. Great. What about um, what tool did you say you use for dependency scanning? Nexus lifecycle from Sonatype. Okay, very good. Um, hmm. That was an easy question. Okay. Yeah, well, there's-, there's Are you some, familiar with that tool? I am familiar with it. <laughs> um, can you tell us how or where or how ServiceNow fits into your pipeline, please? Yes, so ServiceNow is used for change management. Eh? So once um, once uh, once the uh, um, application deployment is done to eat to to the non-production environment or the production environment, eh? we need to uh, register uh, a change in ServiceNow. Eh? So that is um, eh? so we are currently integrating ServiceNow in our uh, pipeline. Eh? So ServiceNow is triggered by Excel release. And service now is also used for incidents and problem management. And that is something we still need to integrate. It's on it's, it's on all kind of backlogs. And service now is also used as a as a as a CMDB, as a uh, yeah, to, to to register all kind of IT products. Uh, so once the deployment is done, then uh, uh, certain information is automatically uh, stored in service now. Yeah, there is another. Uh, way that we use ServiceNow right now. And as Stephen said, that's like a CMDB right now. And we pull also information from it to connect people to the pipeline, for example. Yeah, yeah. And, and one thing, one important uh, thing I mentioned, we also using ServiceNow as an admin, administration for our Azure teams. So all the Azure teams, all the people, all the components, they are going to be registered in ServiceNow and that will serve as a golden source uh, for all kind of agile information. Yeah, good. All right, we have time for one more question here. Uh, we have many questions though, guys. I'm gonna get these to you uh, in writing. Maybe you, if you have time, we could get some answers out. Do you have, are you using Jenkins certified people to work on, on your uh, Jenkins cloud base? Yes, we have a lot of uh, teams and there is, is and there is a lot of Jenkins uh, knowledge in there and for the IT for IT teams that are setting up Jenkins including myself we're all certified and uh, we are now also implementing Jenkins Enterprise and as a part of that program uh, we also plan to have more trainings for other people so more team members for example team admins can be Jenkins certified but that's it's it's on the agenda and it's now getting more important because the teams are getting more uh, autonomy to maintain their own Jenkins server. So that's that's on the roadmap here. Yeah. So and adding to this, we also uh, discussing with Cloud Visa Plan uh, to 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 train um, all developers using Cloud Bees. Uh, so so uh, a more detailed training for 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 certain champions and the basic training for. Um, um, and for all other developers, uh, a lot of our development is happening in India, and also these people we are planning to train. So there is lots of focus on training people. Got it. Um, guys, we're at the top of the hour. We're not going to have time. There, are, As I said, there are a lot more questions, though. 
if it's okay, let us send them to you. And if you have the time to answer any of them, we will post them on DevOps.com. Okay. okay. All right. We're out of time. I apologize. Gentlemen, what a great job you did here. You really gave us some great insight. You know, this, this FITAC and financial services is such an important leader in the DevOps uh, community. And it's great to be able to see, you know, firsthand kind of what your experience is. And thank you. Thank you both very, very much. Um, You're welcome. Thank you. And you know what, guys, we're at the top of the hour. Thank you all for joining us on this another great DevOps.com webinar. Many thanks to CloudBees for sponsoring today's webinar. And uh, we'll see, hope to see everyone soon on our next DevOps.com webinar. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com. Have a great day, everyone. Even kijken of die nog. Uh... Hello? Ja. Dus niet die mensen automatisch uit uh, is. Ja, Uh... Are you guys there? You're still there? Hey guys, I am. Thank you so much. You did a wonderful job. Great. Okay. okay. Yes. Perfect. So everyone is now logged out or? Yeah, I think, we... We, I think they're already logged out. So go ahead and log out. Thank you so much. It was a, okay. it was a great webinar. All yeah. right. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank Bye. you. See you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you guys. All right. Have a good Thanks. day. Okay. Bye. Thank you.